Hello there. How you doing? <sighs> yeah, I know you can see the cup uh, from the Dollar Tree here in Woodstock, Illinois. My wife bought it for me. Green tea, coconut oil, and wildflower honey. Very tasty. Get your King James Bible, the real Bible. Turn in your King James Bible to Proverbs chapter 5. We're going to read Proverbs chapter 5 in its entirety. Okay? Go there. If you're able, get the book and follow me along. Okay? <clears throat> Taking the recommendation of several of the brethren, this video is intended for educational purposes, not for entertainment. So get the book and follow me along in your King James Bible, the real Bible. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 5. My son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thine ear to my understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman drop as an honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil, but her end is bitter as wormwood. Excuse me, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life. Her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house, lest thou give thine honor unto others, and thy years unto the cruel, lest strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. And thou mourn at the last, when thy flesh and thy body are consumed, <coughs> and say, how have I hated instruction, and my heart despised reproof, and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined mine ear to them that instructed me? I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. Drink waters out of thine own cistern, and running waters out of thine own well. <clears throat> Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad, and rivers of waters in the streets. Let them be only thine own, and not strangers with thee. Let thy fountain be blessed, and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Let her be as the loving hen and pleasant roe. Let her breasts satisfy thee at all times, and be thou ravished always with her love. And wilt thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman, and embrace the bosom of a stranger? For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. His own iniquity shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden with the cords of his sin. He shall die without instruction, and in the greatness of his folly he shall go astray. Here in the scriptures, wisdom is compared unto a beautiful woman. But yet we hear here in Proverbs chapter 5, Verse 3, 
for the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. <clears throat> now, this is not directly pointing the finger at Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Roman Catholicism, the Jesuits. But to instruct us in a whole lot of righteousness. That's why we have read that. Okay? Now turn in your King James Bible to Matthew chapter 23. It is important to remember that Matthew chapter 23 is the lead up before the Lord talks about the second coming not the post-tribulation rapture. My word. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 23. We are going to be reading virtually this whole chapter. We will be reading verses 1 under verse 33 in Matthew chapter 23. Doctrinally, this is not for us today. We can get a lot of instructions in righteousness. Amen. But this is before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord God and Savior, our Father, Jesus Christ. Okay? This is doctrinally unto the Jews. This is the King on earth talking to his people as king on earth. Okay, it's important to remember that. Dispensationally, this is still under the law. Okay? So, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 23, beginning at verse 1, on to verse 33. Okay? Then spake Jesus to the multitude. And to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees all sit in Moses' seat. Excuse me. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. <laughs> but all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylactic trees, and enlarge the borders of their garments, and love the uppermost rooms at feasts, and the chief seats in the synagogue and greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be not ye called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. <laughs> you looking at that? And call no man your father upon earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Now, Jesus is not talking about your dad. He's not saying don't call your dad father. Okay? He's not talking about that. Because within Scripture, you see mention to people's actual birth father. Okay? That, because this is Matthew 23, which leads up to Matthew 24, which is about the second coming and the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? I personally believe that verse 8 is a poke at Catholicism. That's my personal belief. Sorry about that. Let's continue. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. 
But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. Excuse me. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Jesuits. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Jesuits. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! <laughs> for ye can pass sea and land, to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Jesuit! Woe unto you, ye blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Ye fools and blind, for what a, whether is greater, the gold or the temple that's, that sanctifieth the gold? And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. Ye fools and blind! For whether is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctifieth the gift? Boy, uh, you get this impression that the Lord's being kind of harsh on these people, huh? Calling them fools and blind, huh? <clears throat> Beg your pardon. Verse 20. Whosoever therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it, and by all things thereon. And whoso shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it, and by him that dwelleth therein. And he that shall swear by heaven, sweareth by the throne of God, and by him that sitteth thereon. Note it, very quickly, note the singular pronoun references there. Just saying. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithes of mint and anus and cumin, and have omitted the weightier, weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye, have, ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Ye blind guides, which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Jesuit. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Jesuits. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. <clears throat> and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. I, lo I love this. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves, that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, 
how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Why'd you read that to us, Brad? This will be the third video where I'm going to be referencing this book specifically. Okay, you see that? Brethren, I highly recommend unto you, you get this book off of Amazon. Uh, this cheap, small, little inoffensive book I think cost me about 11 bucks and I'm almost finished with it uh, I've had other pressing issues to deal with I, I still spend an hour a day in the study of scripture every morning yes but I haven't really been able to read other sources lately but I'm almost finished with this and I gotta tell you brethren <clears throat> this book is shooing itself to be one of the best books on the Jesuits I have read to date. This ranks right up there with the Black Pope, the secret history of the Jesuits, even the two Babylons, okay? Uh, also the Secreta Monita. This is an excellent book. This is very, this is a very excellent book. Um, it's proving its weight in gold. <laughs> it really is. Um, I'm going to read to you out of this book now, like I said, this is the third time that I've referenced this book, but it, this is so, uh, hmm. I'm going to read to you a chapter out of this book. It's called The Jesuit and Families, okay? Now, it's going to be something like four or five pages, okay? But I'm going to read this word for word for you, okay? Because I, I, I just read this chapter today, and I was like, wow, man, okay? But as I'm reading this to you, remember the scriptures that we just looked at. And also, too, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to attempt to put a link in the description box of this video. I do have sometimes issues figuring out how to put links in the description box. If I have an issue with it, it's going to be in the comment section. I'm going to give a link onto an older video of mine, Who is the Mother of Harlots? It's in the uh, Catholicism section of my playlists. <clears throat> uh, the thumbnail is a woman on a beast. Okay, I'm going to attempt to put that in the uh, description box or it's going to be pinned in the comment section Okay, of this video. But as, we're, as I'm reading this to you, word for word, um, remember what we read, okay? And as I'm reading this to you, feel free to reference on your own the scriptures that will be um, brought up onto you while reading this. And I also want you to think about this, brethren. Where do you hear some of the phrases some of the wordings that you're going to hear. Where else do you hear that? Where else? Here on YouTube and outside your door, outside your door, do you run into this kind of stuff? Okay? Okay? Now, like I said, this is going to be word for word. I am going to take my time, read a little slowly to you. Okay? Beg your pardon. <clears throat> I might stop and make a few comments along the way. I don't know. But this is going to be word for word. Okay? This is called The Jesuits and Families. Word for word out of this book. Get this book. All right. We begin. The Jesuits and Families. Though France is the more noted instant, instance of Jesuit banishment, 
it is not the only one. The fathers have been chased from Germany, from Belgium, from Italy, and from Switzerland. This has assembled them in England, which once more has become the European focus and rallying ground of these invertebrate plotters and inextinguishable incendiaries. It seems bootless to discuss the question of admitting them, seeing they have already been admitted. Note that. Had that question been still, in, still to be discussed, we should have put it to the Popish nations. Shall we admit these men? The answer would have been no. We have driven them out of our own territories, although of the same faith. And that's true. Papal nations way back then even kicked out the Jesuits because the Jesuits are so vile and filthy, disgusting scumbags. I <clears throat> we would have put the, that question to history. History would have returned an emphatic no, and it would have enforced that no by pointing with its warning finger to the black indictment against them, over which, in its leading events, we have rapidly gone. Okay, now page 86. We have been accustomed to welcome the refugees of all countries. Uh, by the way, you, my countrymen of America, get a load of this, okay? Rereading that again, we have been accustomed to welcome the refugees of all countries without question asked touching their political or their religious creed. So say many, but these men are neither political nor religious refugees. It is not against this government or against that. It is not against this religious creed or against that that these men are in revolt. They have burst the bonds of human society. They have raised the foundations of eternal morality. They are rebels against all governments, offenders against all creeds. As such, they can claim the protection of no law and the asylum of no country. They who have renounced all obligations have thereby forfeited all claims. The denial of all the rights of others is the annihilation of their own. Now, get a load of this. But, it is again urged, to what practical end forbid the admission of the Jesuits? You may as well try to shut out the winds or frame an edict against the entrance of evil spirits. We grant that the Jesuit can pass, whenever it suits him, into another shape. Her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Huh? <clears throat> and become as viewless as the winds, or as the spirit whose step no one hears, and whose form eludes every eye. You banish him in his character of priest today. He returns tomorrow in the guise of a peddler or of a shoemaker, or it may be of a foreign scholar or count. Get a load of that. It does not follow, therefore, that it is wise to leave our law wholly inoperative. It is some defense to the citizen 
to have it declared that these men are unlawful intruders into our country and that their residence in it is, a, is in violation of the statute. Besides, whatever difficulty may exist as regard the individual Jesuit, there is no difficulty as regards those formidable organized fraternities which are planting themselves down east and west, north and south of our country, and are rearing their palatal, palatal edifices on the shores of the English Channel, on the banks of our highland locks, in the heart of our great cities, beneath the shadow of the cathedral, which is burnt, by the way, and amid the quiet pastoral, pastoral scenes of our rural, rural districts, displaying to the astonished eyes of the uninitiated esoteric and esoteric. Remember? I addressed that in Jesuit Small Arms Tactics, okay? Displaying to the astonished eye of the uninitiated, those who are not in the know. Okay? Mansions sumptuously furnished with couches and marbles, with the rich fabrics of the loom. Outwardly, they look very beautiful, but inwardly they are full of dead men's bones. And of the chief, the overs of art, and the not less sumptuous outside garnishing of lawns, fountains, and shady walks, attesting the bounteous care with which the church provides for the delication of the men who have devoted themselves to her service. And who, the better to discharge it, have taken upon them a vow of poverty? Get a hold of that. Over the neck of our law, hundreds of Jesuits have already entered our country, and hundreds more are to follow. Think about that for us here in America. I rest my point. What recompense, what recompense will they make us for the hospitality we are extending to them? The same which they made to the Protestants of Poland, to the Huguenots of France, to the Puritans of England in a bygone age. Pay attention. Making a loud boy boast of their zeal for education and their special talent for imparting it. They will first tax us for the erection of their schools and then they will seek by the lure of a free education to draw our youth into them. Brother Vato gave me a link about the college scam. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What an elegant litany. What a polished manner will they impart to our young gentlemen, to the admiring delight of many a proud mother and many an equally fond father. What perfect masters in the science of tact, that first of all, the virtues in the opinion of many, will the fathers show themselves in the drawing room. Excuse me. <clears throat> now, pay attention to this, okay? What paragons of gentility, how courteous, how bland, not for a world, would they offend the taste or hurt the feelings of anyone? 
How ready with the right compliment at the right moment and how prettily said how overflowing in charity to all mankind and in particular to the Protestant portion of it get a hold of that okay get a hold of that what a power to read faces and with what an unerring instinct will they find their way to the frivolous, to the sentimental, and above all, to the rich, that is, to the weak side of such. How delightful to listen as they talk on art, on fashionable literature, on foreign travel, and similar topics. But never... but never on thorny theologies. How prodigious, pro prodigiously have Romanists been misrepresented will the easy-going Protestant exclaim. Let me read that again. How prodigiously have Romanists been misrepresented will the easy going Protestant exclaim how many times have you heard people who profess to be Christian say take it easy on the Catholics how many times have you heard that how many times have you heard professed King James Bible believing Christians to take away the sting, the bitter end, the harsh, vile realities of the Jesuits away from them by trying to make nice with them. How many times have you run into that? How many times have you seen that? Huh? Huh? Let's continue. What could more enliven an evening party than the presence of of such amiable, accomplished, and well-informed gentlemen. We are delighted, will mine host and hostess say, on bidding them adieu for the night. Let us see you often. Now, now, okay, um, I should have done this with what I've been reading up to, okay? Uh, from right where my finger is here to right there if you can pause that if it comes up clear for you great and read it read it yourself okay check this out after these playful preludes will come serious business at the second or third visit from these gentlemen and ladies in masks some one member of the family, one is enough to begin with, will be singled out as the object of special attention, as the object of special attention. We shall suppose that the party to be operated upon is a lady. Her fobbles and partialities have been previously noted, and her new acquaintance suddenly surprises her by display, displaying a passionate fondness for the very same objects which are favorites with her. Get a load of what I'm what I'm reading to you, and put that in context with people who say they are one thing, but after a while prove themselves to be something else. Okay, let's continue. It may be a picture, or a poodle dog, or a canary bird or a new novel, or some art or study. It matters not what. It is a link of sympathy. It is the needle that draws in the thread of religious discussion. Cautiously, the subject of the differences betwixt the popish 
and Protestant churches will be approached. Quote, What a number of sects you Protestants form! exclaims the Romanist. You, you, you tell me you haven't run into that. Playing on mere names and ignoring the substantial agreement in all cardinal points in the Protestant world. Quote, let us see, quite a host, some score, some 50, some hundred denominations. Which of all these is the right one? Which of you has the true religion? Ah, well, that I am thankful. He will piously, piously ejaculate. Beg your pardon. That's what it says there. Beg your pardon. Raising his eyes, that I do not dwell in that babble. Do you understand what I just read to you? Let, uh, quote, What a number of sects you Protestants form, exclaims the Romanist, playing on mere names and ignoring the substantial agreement in all cardinal points in the Protestant world. Quote, Let us see quite a host, some score, some fifty, some hundred denominations. Which of all these is the right one? Which of you has the true religion? Ah, well, thankful I am. He will piously ejaculate. Sorry if I missaid, misquoted that the uh, before. Raising his eyes that I do not dwell in that babble. Let's continue. When it is seen that the thrust has told, when it is seen that the thrust has told, then is the moment for bringing into view the unity of the Roman Church. Quote, we are one, will the Romanist exclaim with an air of exultation. Quote, one over all the earth, a grand old instructable unity and yet Rome is the real Babel. It's in the red. Where is that? Where my finger is? Right? See that? <laughs> I like that. The word church covers a multitude of motley and conflicting opinions, controversialists, and orders held together simply by the force of papal authority. Such is her church surveyed within, but viewed from the outside, it appears not what it is, a great confusion, but a great unity. Following up his advantage, the party attacking continues. Pay attention. We are the old church. You Protestants date from only the 16th century. Your religion had no existence till the days of Luther. We, on the other hand, are the ancient apostolic church which Peter planted at Rome. See the line of our popes coming down from the first age. They are a glorious army of many hundreds. All these 1800 years have they been governing the church from their chair on the seven hills. Brethren, how many times have you heard people defend the satanic Post-tribulation rapture, Steve Anderson. We stand by the historical position of the church. You want to know what, they're, what church they're talking about? They're talking about Rome. And you'll note what, what, the, what, the, what is said here. 
Your religion had no existence till the days of Luther. Doesn't that sound grossly familiar to you? Huh? You tell me, brother, sister, outside your door, here on YouTube, you tell me you don't hear stuff like that being said today. You tell me that, brother. You tell me that, sister. <clears throat> yeah, right. Yeah, right. Let's continue. <clears throat> oh, and very quickly, I, I like how it says, they are, they are a glorious army of many hundreds, all these 1800 years, they have been governing the church from their chair on the seven hills. What does it say in the book of Revelation? She sits on seven mountains. The red thing, the, that in the red is what I just read you. Pause it and read that and ingest it. Think about it. Think about this stuff, Christian. Think about this. Come on. Continuing. What an imposing vision does this call upon call up before the mind? Placed alongside a picture like this, combining so many elements fitted to inspire awe, Protestantism begins to look verily Excuse me. Protestantism begins to look verily but a new and distinctive church. Let me read that again. Protestantism begins to look verily but a new and distinctive diminutive. I'm sorry, I just messed that up. Here, here. this is what I'm trying to read to you. So you can't accuse me of messing it up. Okay? You see that? Right above my finger? Okay, sorry about that. Let's, let me continue. Protestantism begins to look barely but a new and diminutive church. Beg your pardon. Beg your pardon. Can I, says the Protestant, whom this gorgeous creation has dazzled, can I be wrong in joining myself to this church of the ages? Am I not safe in trusting my salvation where so many before me have trusted theirs? The historical position of the church, right? This is deception the second, and it is a greater deception than the first. What is this church of the ages but a phantasmagora, like that which a magician may summon up? Or like that delusive show which the great deceiver spread out before the eyes of the Savior? Touch it with the finger of history. It vanishes outright. Its pastoral staves and golden mitres, its conclaves and cathedral domes, all tinted and glorified with the light of 18 centuries, go down in darkness, are swallowed up in sudden night. That is the ancient apostolic church, which possesses the ancient apostolic doctrine. Let its seat be where it may, at Rome, at Jerusalem, at Geneva, or at London. And then continues the man, who is doing battle for Rome. How bald, quote, excuse me, quote, how bald and cold your Protestant worship. Now, what I'm about to read you, think about these emergent Catholics, you know, emergent Christians. Think about this. Let's read this again. Quote, how bald and cold your Protestant worship. Come with me. I will show you worship that will kindle your emotions and bear 
up your soul on wings to the third heavens. Here are anthems and lights and incense and priests in garments of glory and beauty, like the priests of old, celebrating mysterious and solemn rites. That is worship. And then to aid your feeble devotion, here are symbols to suggest to you holy things and holy persons. Here are images to help you in prayer. Nay, here are saints, once sufferers on earth like yourself, now in glory, their sympathies awake and ready to help you with their intercessions. End quote. Get a hold of that there, saints, brethren, sisters, children, okay? Get a hold of that. Continuing. The person of sensuous disposition, like the child to whom some garnished show has been exhibited, is ready to leap up at the sight and think that here there is indeed gladness of heart. What a mistake! What a mistake! <laughs> In the midst of all these lights and symphonies, there may be darkness in the soul, the darkness of death, where there is no communion of the soul with God, there can be no joy, there is despair and death. If thou knewest the gift of God, it was said of old to, of old to one, who till then had never thirsted save for the water of earth. Quote, and who it and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. End quote. It is the living water only that can make glad the heart. But the living water Rome but the living water Rome, alas, has not to give, and the gorgeous ceremonial which she offers instead is but a poor substitute. It is but the water of the earth. Now, very quickly, I want to show you this, okay? Where my finger is down, okay? Where my finger is right here down to right there where my finger is here. If you can, pause that and read it yourself. Hopefully it comes up clear for you, okay? Get a load of this. Listen. Listen. But, continues the tempter, who sees his victim still halting dubiously on the threshold of his Church of the Ages. Are you not running a desperate risk in venturing your soul upon the credit of a book? I am amazed at your boldness. Come, I will show you a far stabler and broader foundation. Yea, hath God said. Let me read. See that in the red? Pause that and read it. You tell me. Have you ever heard that before? From professing Christians? Huh? Let me read that again. Quote. Are you not running a desperate risk in venturing your soul upon the credit of a book? I am amazed at your boldness. Come, I will show you a far stabler and broader foundation. Here is the great Catholic Church. Has it not been promised that the Holy Spirit will abide always in the Church? Is she not in virtue 
of the perpetual inhabitation of the divine spirit infallible? Get a load of that. As a helpless child, come and throw yourself upon the bosom of that mother. Once within her arms, you're safe. <laughs> now, this red stuff. You pause that and read it yourself. I'm going to read it, of course, but you pause that and read that. Why run the tremendous hazards attendant on judging for yourself? Can you be sure that you know the true meaning of the Bible? Have you ever heard any of this? Come on, think. May you not have misinterpreted it? Here in the Church of Rome, you have the doctors and fathers of all ages instructing you in the true sense of Scripture. Why set up your own interpretation of it in opposition to their unanimous teaching? Are you wiser than them all? Submit yourself if you would avoid fatal error. Submit yourself to their guidance. They will show you the safe road. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Continuing. This argument commonly succeeds in vanquishing the person on whom it is urged, even when he may have resisted the previous ones. My judgment, says he to himself, is weak. I am ill-informed and ignorant in these matters. Why should I reject the assistance offered me? Is it not pride to set up my own opinion in opposition to the sentiments of the doctors and fathers of the church? This is where we're at, where I'm at, the red right there. Pause it and read it. Is it not becoming humility to defer to these holy and learned men who are so much wiser than I am and so much more able to judge for me than I am to judge for myself? Where'd you go to college? How knoweth this man letters having never learned? And when they observed Peter and John they took notice of them that they were ignorant and unlearned men, but they had been with Jesus. I just paraphrased that and butchered it. Forgive me, but you get the point. Besides, by the time this stage of the discussion is reached, the person is commonly so shaken and bewildered in mind by the novel aspects in which so many matters have been presented. And the consummate, consummate sophistry and art, the elaboration of centuries, which has been brought to support error, that he surrenders without further parley, without a fight. Yet in all this long train of deceptions, there is perhaps no greater deception than this. For the unanimous concord and agreement of the fathers and doctors of the church in their interpretation of the Bible does not exist. There is really no such thing. It is a fiction of the Romish of the Romish Contra, controversialist. Pardon me. It is a fiction of the Roman controversialist. Each doctor has given his own interpretation of the sense of Scripture. 
and the interpretation of one doctor is often in flat contradiction to the interpretation of another doctor. Every Christian, the very humblest, has as good right to interpret the Bible for himself as the greatest and most learned of all these doctors. Every Christian, the very humblest, has as good a right to interpret the Bible for himself as the greatest and most learned of all these doctors. And here from where my finger is down is the close of the chapter. Pause it and read it. A right, did we say, it is his duty. Salvation is the personal concern of every man. Each man, well, excuse me, each must ascertain the sense of Scripture for himself with the promised help of the Spirit who inspired it. And no one is at liberty to shirk that responsibility by throwing it upon the shoulders of another. No, not upon the shoulders of the cons consociated doctorship of the church. Do you get that? Let's read that again. A right, did we say, it is his duty. Salvation is the personal concern of every man, and each must ascertain the sense of Scripture for himself with the promised help of the Spirit who inspired it. And no one is at liberty to shirk that responsibility by throwing it upon the shoulders of another. No, not upon the shoulders of of the consociated doctorship of the church. Even granting that such a unanimous consent and concord as Rome offers us for our guidance did exist, of what value or use would it be? It is, after all, but the private judgment of, say, 10,000 fallible doctors? We need infallibility as the basis of our hopes for eternity. Yeah. Yeah. We do. We need infallibility as the basis of our hopes for eternity. We have such a basis in God's infallibly inspired word and nowhere else. In that book, God speaks directly to man. And when man turns away from God speaking in his word to listen to the church, he shifts his faith from a divine to a merely human foundation. He abandons the rock for quicksand. He forsakes those testimonies in which is eternal righteousness for the varying and fallible opinions of man. You tell me, with what I just read you, with what we have just looked at, you tell me you don't run into that. That's how the Jesuits operate. And I had to share this with you.
So, brethren, the, 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 this one, this is one of my, um, this one I use every day. I read the Psalms, Proverbs, Wisdom, um, uh, the, not the Wisdom, Ecclesiastes, some songs, Job out of this one. Brethren, we have an infallible standard in the King James Bible. This is what you base your faith off of. Not the wisdom of men. Not the Jesuits, my goodness. But you just saw an example of how the Jesuits infiltrate and bring in their perversion into the equations. Note how some of the people here on YouTube do that. I can think of several. His Holiness, the Grand Inquisitor from Queens, New York, Stephen Anderson, <laughs> Chungus, <laughs> Kent Hovind, and the list goes on and on. How prevalent is the hand of the Jesuits in everything? Quite. It's unavoidable. But that's why you need to stay in the book. Stay in the book. Trust this book. Because, yes, Christian, you are to base everything on a book. Because without this book, you wouldn't know Jesus. You got whack jobs like Final Call 07 that say, hey, throw this away and go off of your feelings. It's the book. It's the book. Well, uh, thankfully, this was not as long as it, uh, I was afraid it was going to be. To be honest with you, all I don't really enjoy doing almost two hour long videos, but they happen. Okay. Like I said, I'm going to try to put a link in the description box for um, who is the mother of harlots, an older video of mine. If not, it's going to be pinned in the comment section. I do got other videos that um, I'm working on that hopefully I'm going to come out with soon. Before Easter. Okay. But uh, whatever happens, happens. I love y'all. I hope you get something out of this. I think you will. I think you will. Y'all have yourself a good day. I'll see you in my next video whenever that is. Okay. Bye.